everybody and welcome back to the channel and if you're new here you're really welcome i'm jane um, my husband mike is behind the camera we're british early retirees debt and mortgage free are living a thrifty frugal and money-saving life on a super tight budget here in Brittany in northwest france and every wednesday we open our home and invite you in for a midweek money chat and this week's midweek money chat is a serious talk and it's answering the question, are we prepared for a financial breaking point? There's plenty of evidence, isn't there, that people are not preparing for a financial breakdown. And one of the pieces of evidence is that people are still spending pretty much as they always have done. An example would be and using credit cards in spending. Now, as much as we know, there are people who use a credit card and pay off the balance every single month. There's a good percentage of people who don't do that and they just carry debt from one month to the next and more debt gets added to it. We know that people are using their credit cards to buy their food. We know that people are using takeaway food services and it's actually an area that's growing. In times when it's hard, it's always surprising to see that fast food and takeaway and junk food is a growing market. And often those people have that as an app on their phone, it's an easy swipe and people are spending as normal. And in some cases and in some areas, they're actually spending more. an exaggeration to say that some people are really sleepwalking into a financial catastrophe. Their co the cost of living is outstripping what it actually costs them to live. And it, it doesn't take much, does it, to throw a family into negative. It would just take long-term illness. It could just take a car breakdown. It could take your central heating completely collapsing, or maybe you live somewhere very, very hot and you cannot live without air conditioning and your air conditioning system completely failing. And you have to have that. It really doesn't take much, does it? And yet if people carry on as normal and they just carry on spending as they did before, they are, and as I said, it's not an exaggeration to say, sleepwalking into massive financial problems. So let me give you three quick examples here of how people are just walking into this problem without facing up to it, without dealing with it now once they can. The first one is, is they're still wasting. We know people are still wasting food and it's a very precious commodity and there isn't much of it. We know that people are still buying takeaway food when they've got food at home. They're bringing food back from the supermarket. They've gone to the supermarket. They haven't got a list. They're not preparing properly for when they do go to the supermarket. So when they get home, they've duplicated things. They're pushing the new food into the front of the fridge or the front of the cupboards. They're not stock rotating and that is causing waste. They've got food that passes its sell by date or its eat before date in fresh food. They've got vegetables that might go off. They've got food in the freezer that might have freezer burn and not be good to eat. Although you can still eat things that have got freezer burn. They're buying domestic items that they've still got. They're not using up what they've already got. They're still buying too many things that they've already got. They're buying clothes when they've got tons of clothes in the cupboard that they're not already wearing, that are the same size. They've got duplicates of things. And the third thing that people are doing is they're behaving as if nothing's wrong. You know, you'll say to them, oh, well, there's a food shortage. Oh, there's not a food shortage where I am. There is a food shortage. There is. There's a food shortage globally. Farmers are planting less food. That's just, that's just a fact. There is a food shortage. That everybody's just pretending things are as normal. Go, oh, well, it's all right where I am. I'm all right where I am. And people are pretending that everything's okay. So they're going on with their spending habits just as they've always done. Now, 
Now the frugal people amongst us, the money savers, the people who are savvy about money, the people who are thrifty, you might be wondering why all of us are so worried about this and why we make these financial plans, why we have, are in this state of financial preparedness all the time. And if we look at just the facts, just the facts, we've got the fastest rate of inflation that we've had in a very, very long time. Huge levels of inflation. I don't believe for one minute that those highlighted government facts about inflation. We know how much more we have to pay for everything. We know what has doubled in price. We all know that. We've got the fastest and most rapid decline in living standards. Those of us with younger family members, we're not seeing them having a better standard of living. We are seeing their standard of living declining. We've got the most rapid growth in the widening of the gap between those who have and those who have not. This is an unarguable fact, it's, it's just there. We are seeing the decline and the disappearing of the middle classes. When you have people who are professionals, from nurses to paramedics, to teachers, to local government officers, to people in the armed forces, to police officers, to firefighters, when you have all of those people who for many, many years had a, had a good standard of living, now can't afford to put their heating on, who can't afford to replace household items, who are struggling in all aspects of their finances, that's when you can say, there is your evidence of the decline of the middle classes. And finally, we've got a business model, and it's, it's quite easy to see in so many of the countries, which has returned to profit over volume. They call it POV, and it's a quite easy one. And we can look at, they're not making so much, but these companies are still making big profits. They're not growing so much, but the supermarkets are still making big profits. They're not making as many cars, you can just look at all of those there and it's profit over volume. And because there's less of everything, they're creating scarcity and all of that pushes up the price of absolutely everything. And you do think to yourself, there is gonna be a breaking point where people cannot afford these things. Increasingly, you'll think to yourself, will I ever be able to afford this item or that item ever again? We're already seeing people who are honestly saying to themselves, I can't afford to put my heating on every time it is cold. I can only afford to put it on for a certain time of the day. So that's why those of us who are financially prepared, those of us who are thrifty, who are frugal, worry about these things. I know not everybody worries about these things, but it's why we do. And the preparations that we make, I'm about to share with you. I always think this is an important thing to add into any of my videos when I talk about money saving, and it is this. Frugality doesn't cure poverty. The only cure to poverty is an increase in income. And it's a hard thing to have to say, and it's rather blunt, and I wish it were not so. The definition of poverty here in France and other major developed modern countries is you would be living on less than 60% of the median income. The median income means 50% of people earn more than that and 50% of people earn less than that. And the median income is obviously different in every single country. I'm just talking about the on paper definition of poverty. And I'm sorry that I do have to bring this up into videos because I would be remiss not to. Let's start talking about practical solutions to be prepared for this and the first one is determine your needs and it's knowing a number. 
It's knowing the number, the amount of money that it will cost you for your bare bones budget to cover your needs. And that is, can you cover these? Can you pay for your utilities? Can you keep the lights on? Can you heat the place as best you can? Can you run the tap? Do you have water? Can you pay your necessary taxes, your council tax, your property tax on your house? Can you pay your rent? Can you pay your mortgage? Can you eat? Have you got the basic money for transport to get to work? Can you buy the basics of food? If you can cover those, you have met your bare bones budget. If you cannot cover those, you do not have a budgeting problem, that's when you have to start looking at your income. So there's number one, determine your needs and can you pay for them? The second point of being financially prepared is that you really need to be on a written budget. It doesn't matter how you write it down, it could be an app on your phone, you could be a spreadsheet person, you could buy yourself a budget book or a notebook, but you need to know all the money coming in, all the money going out. Um, within that budget, you need to know how much you're saving, how much you're paying for debts, how much you're putting aside every single month. But it is absolutely vital, and there will be people who think that they're doing a good enough job and they're being as frugal as they can, that they're watching the money that they're spending. But without having that written budget and being accountable and sticking to it, it's, it's just not going to be so easy for you to be prepared. So there's the second point. Make sure that you are on a written budget and that you're sticking to it. My next point of preparation is all about saving. You need to be saving, that's the first line on your budget. You can decide that for yourself. And it's all about your long-term saving. Your long-term saving could be building up an emergency fund, making your emergency fund that you've already got bigger. It could be putting into your long-term savings and you do not have to have a specific goal for this. This can be something that you just put away long term. It could be towards your retirement. It could be just because you do not know what's around the corner. And I share with people that we set aside 10% of our income each month. Now, you may be here for the first time ever, but we have pensions where the money comes to us as a monthly payment. And we also earn money through YouTube, which comes to us as a monthly payment. And we take that and after all taxes and deductions, then we decide to put 10% of that side. But the amount of money that you save is absolutely up to you. But it is totally essential in these times where you need to be prepared for the things that are getting worse that every single budget that you have each and every month, the first line of it goes to savings. My next point about being financially prepared is the big picture of your finances, the big picture of your budget, which is all about your annual budget or it could be the projected budget that you've got for the next five years. You may, for example, be somebody who's saving for a deposit for a house. You may be somebody who's saving for retirement and therefore your budget preparations might be for five years, 10 years, 20 years. Who knows, that is up to you. But it's really important in your budget to have the big picture. Lots of people are really good at preparing for that month. They've got their supermarket budget, their food budget, and then something comes along that they haven't prepared for, a big dental bill. They might have a veterinary bill. They might have a breakdown. And that is the part of having those sinking funds or savings pots for things that could happen or might happen. You might be like us. You might have annual bill, an annual water bill, tax bill. You pay for your refuse collection, your recycling annually, your property taxes that you may pay annually. You might break those down monthly. That is your choice and it's the way you do it. But you need to have the bigger picture for your budget and start thinking long term so you don't have those financial hiccups that could turn up in eight months time or 18 months time. The next 
next practical thing that we can all do in preparing for the fact that financially things can get a lot worse is to look at our spending. And every time we think of spending anything at all that isn't essential, is ask ourselves, do I really need this? And if I need this, do I need this now? The next thing is, do I need to buy this new? Could I buy this second hand? Could I buy this second hand and take, for example, a washing machine? You may only have a certain amount of money in an emergency fund. You may not have yet set up sinking funds to save for this. You might be able to take the amount of money to buy a second hand washing machine from your emergency fund and then go back to saving to fill up that emergency fund again and then knowing this is the time to start saving for those white goods in my house that are essential but I need to save for it later and start putting aside that and that's the way that you can step away from using credit. So in anything and everything that you buy and if you look around there are still people buying tons and tons of non-essential items. Don't be one of those people. Ask yourselves, is my spending stopping me from saving? Is my spending keeping me broke? Is my spending going to be the reason that I'm not prepared for the finances and the problems that can happen ahead? Look at your spending and ask yourself every single time, is this essential? This brings me on to my next point about being financially prepared. Those of us who are always preparing financially, who don't want to waste our money, who are thrifty and frugals, we have a very different mindset to waste. We don't waste anything. We really do know this. We do not waste anything. So let's have a quick whiz through all these things. We meal plan, we stock check the food we've got, we don't buy what we've already got, we don't buy what we don't need, we batch cook and freeze, we don't waste any leftovers, we don't leave the tap running, we don't flush the toilet when we don't need to, we don't spend hours in the shower, we're in, we're out, we're washed, we're gone, we don't use a long washing machine cycle, we don't use the dishwasher unless we need to, we don't buy anything that we don't need. We don't use the car unnecessarily. In all aspects of life, we have a very, very different attitude to waste. It's a really strange one, isn't it? I cannot even fathom waste of any sort at all. So those amongst us who are financially prepared, who know that things can get worse and are getting worse, what we are doing is we have a very different mindset about waste. We cannot have this chat today, can we, about being financially prepared, being in a state of financial prepared, preparedness without talking about debt. And many people who've really woken up to this, who know that you have to get prepared, be prepared, because things can get worse, are in a state that if they have debt, they face up to it and they are working as hard as they possibly can to eliminate debt and not use debt again in the future. So if this is something you can do something about that you can earn more money or you can sell stuff to start clearing debt or that you can stop using an overdraft or you can stop using a credit card or that you can pay down your mortgage, you've got a bit more money, you can pay down your mortgage. But it's a huge part of being financially prepared and it's the way that you can weather these financial storms. If your only debt is your mortgage, you're in a better position. If you have no debt at all, you are in the best position to cope with the financial problems that are ahead of all of us. Thank you to everyone who watches our videos. Thank you massively to everyone who hits the like button. Thank you to all subscribers, old and new. And most of all, thanks to everyone who leaves a comment. We read every single one of them. 
and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.